get it for one month for $149. You get it six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And for one year for $1195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, what happens, folks, is that they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Steve has a huge amount of tools that he uses every day to, you know, that you're going to get as soon as you get the newsletter. So come on over. You get it for months, six months, a year. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you for some reason, just 28 days. Just cancel it, and, you know, you charge nothing. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I think I have found a diamond in the rough in your neck of the woods in St. Pete. Oh, I like it. A real diamond. So I went. To, I've been to a number of concerts here, or last over the last week. One of them was Saturday night. A group called Acoustic Alchemy. Great, great jazz band. Most people have heard their have heard some of their songs, whether they know about the band or not. Okay. And I've seen them probably. They travel through South Florida once a year. So probably for the last five, six years, I've gone to see their concerts. And the one of the founding members, his name is Greg Carmichael. Great, amazing guitar player. But his wife is uh, is dealing with some some major sickness and illness, and so he's no longer traveling with the group. So I was a little bit bummed about that. Well, turns out the guitar player that was replacing him is a guy named Nate Najar, and he lives in St. Pete. He doesn't just live in St. Pete. He also plays in St. Pete. Right. And I'm telling you, Tom, if you like guitar players, this guy is just extraordinary. Nate and Najar, I want to write this down. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to show you here. This Because I know we got a number of listeners right. in the Tampa area. Turns out that uh, he's playing, I guess, um, uh, in uh, in Clearwater, November 17th through the 19th. There is a Sun Coast Jazz Festival. Oh, I think yeah. it was down. I think it was down just past the old office area. Yeah, it and is. Then, we can see it from right? the office. Yeah, no, no, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, right. So right. there's there's a festival there, and he's playing at different times, so you could look that up. But he's okay. also doing a Christmas. I believe it's a Christmas event on uh, Thursday, December seventh, and December eighth um, in St. Pete. Or it's I, I'm sorry, December seventh is in St. Pete. So you can you can look that up. Oh, Nate Najar, N A J A. I mean. It is. He is. He was amazing. So all of a sudden, that wasn't so. You know, I always say everything in life happens for us, uh, and and really that was. So I was I was a little bit bummed that uh, Greg Carmichael was going to be there, but really what I got was uh, you know was a new guy to listen to. How cool and, was that? Yeah. And then last night I went to see uh, uh, Special Effects, which is a jazz band that I've been listening to for thirty years, and I've never been able to see him travel. And uh, one of, one of the main players' his name is Kaylee Minucci. He brings out a uh, a woman. Uh, to play the uh, the violin. Her name was Karen Briggs, B-R-I-G-G-S. If anybody looks it up, and, and she was amazing. My wife and I, we looked at each other, we're like, wow, never heard sound like that coming out of a uh, of a violin, you know, in this jazz band. So, uh, but 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 uh, finding and, this Nate And most of these are at small venues, Steve, right? Which oh, is really very cool, small. right? Yeah. yeah. What last happens, last folks? Night, yeah. Yeah. 200 people max. Which is huge, you know, which is dynamite, I know. Yeah, I know. yeah so, which is, it, it is so wonderful, you know, to see that. So I, was, I thought I'd pass that on to you. I, I couldn't wait really to tell you because I'm like, it, and then when I found out he was playing there, I'm like, oh, this is a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's one thing to be a resident. It's another thing to, you know, play in your local community. No, totally, man, totally. Right? So that's beautiful. So last week, let's just uh, get to the markets here. Last week, the Spies, the Qs, the Diamonds, and the IWM form weekly Gartley buy patterns. Folks, the Gartley buy patterns pattern is uh, in a market that's moving higher. You get an A to B equals CD to the downside. And that's what we refer to as a, so it's the same thing as a buy the D point pattern. And uh, so each of those formed, uh, formed a nice uh, bull sash candles to confirm that pattern. So I'm showing the A to B equals CD patterns on my screen. People can see uh, it's got a one, the one to one level. Then I go to different Fibonacci expansions. I use 1.272, 1.618, and the 2.0 level. And what folks need to understand is the way that I look at an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside or the downside. We're talking now of the downside. The way that we know that the pattern is completed is the is, is the market will tell us. And it will tell us by forming some type of bullish reversal candle. And that's one of the tools that I teach to subscribers out there. So we've got weekly um, Gartley buy patterns. It's really important for us to understand where the profile levels, where resistance areas are. So folks are looking at our screen or copying it. It's in the upper right hand corner. It shows you top W, center W, bottom BOTW. That's the weekly chart. And it's just the center of the top and the bottom. Bottom is where the buyers are at. Top is where the sellers are at. 
Another support resistance to observe is what I refer to as the oscillator and change line. And we can clearly see that last week's move was really a test of that oscillator and change line, a test of resistance, especially if you look at the IWM out here. Big move last week, right? But ran, boom, right smack dab into resistance out there. This is the weekly equity futures contracts. They each also form Gartley buy patterns. So we've got really nice, significant buy patterns. However, if the issue is, can price take out resistance? And so far, the answer is no, it hasn't. And so here, just like uh, in the Russell 2000, lower right, if you see it, folks, you can see it ran right up in that red oscillator and change line. Now, a red oscillator and change line is, um, is, a, is more of a problem than a green one. A red one, red one tells us that we have a falling price oscillator below zero, and that's a very bearish condition. So in the case here of both the Dow, which had an amazing rally last week, uh, at the Russell 2000, they ran, ran right up into resistance. How does that work? It's a beautiful thing. We take a look at the daily time, time frame here for the SPY, the Dime, and the IWM. They completed what's referred to as Roadsman to Indicator Bottoms, the Q's 8 TD9 count bottom. And the uh, Q's here, um, uh, the, the, the Q's ran right into resistance. The breakdown level was at 369.92. Now, that's using the TD9 count system out there. It just gives us an objective level of resistance. So we've run into resistance, resistance, resistance out there. That's important to understand. The point that I'm trying to make is that last week's rally, it's run into daily and weekly resistance areas. And therefore, at this moment in time, we do not have a clear signal of any kind of a market breakout. So if we're at resistance, the next logical question, does that mean the market is topped? And the answer there is the market is most likely forming a short-term top. And what I look at here, this is the New York Stock Exchange. And the center panel here, it says advanced decline oscillator. That's what we're taking a look at. And what this did was this got into extreme overbought territory. And when we get into the overbought territory, that's a move above the plus 150 level. That condition needs to work to be worked off. Now, the cool thing is what I really think is going to take place here and how the market's going to form its next top, and it's not right here right now. If you take a look at all these green diagonal lines up at the highs where price is moving higher, yes. but then look down at the advanced client oscillator where it's moving lower, I believe whenever we get above this 150 area, and we were at the highest level since January of uh, this year out there, that's typically the way that a top forms. So this is the pattern that I'll be looking at, and that's when I believe that we set the next top inside the markets. You know what's so cool, Steve, which is just too, and folks, it is so hard to do a weekly um, oh, Gartley. it is. I mean, yeah. this is, this is, it's not easy, folks, okay? No doubt. Yeah. And, and my mind's still open to that. Oh, we no, could no, have I, a major I get it. Problem. I get it. It's just really cool, man. All right, listen, yeah. man, can, can you just text me that, guys? That I will. Absolutely. Awesome, man. Awesome. Absolutely. Have a Take great one. Hey, have a great one. Have a safe one, Steve. Thank you. Thanks. You Stay right think. there, folks.